five and the EF5 tornadoes are on the top of the scale as far as severity. They have always been rare beasts, you could say, but around Wisconsin and the U.S., it's been far longer than usual since the last time a twister received that rating. Yeah, so are we due for a big one? That's the question. Fox 11 meteorologist Phil DeCastro explores what's being called the EF5 drought. Nearly 30 years ago, the last F5 tornado to strike Wisconsin ripped through the small town of Oakfield in Fond du Lac County on July 18, 1996. And nearly 12 years ago, the last EF5 to strike anywhere around the world decimated Moore, Oklahoma on May 20, 2013. But since then, not a single tornado has been given that highest EF5 rating by the National Weather Service. While EF5 tornadoes account for less than one-tenth of a percent of all tornadoes, the historical odds of seeing one in any given year in the United States are still over 40 percent. The odds of going 10 years without one, though, are at less than a half a percent. And Wisconsin's historical rate of scale-topping twisters is much lower. Just one is expected every 22 years or so. But it's been 29 years since Oakfield. So what gives? Are we seeing fewer tornadoes? Are tornadoes getting weaker? At some point, such as with the EF5 drought, the odds of that random chance being completely random and not being linked to something else, such as a change in rating practice, starts to decrease. Dr. Tony Liza is a researcher with NOAA and the National Severe Storms Laboratory and co-authored a paper released this year titled, Where Have the EF5s Gone? A Closer Look at the Drought of the Most Violent Tornadoes in the United States. He says it likely has to do with how we rate tornadoes since changing from the Fujita, or F scale, to the Enhanced Fujita, or EF scale, in 2007, rather than the tornadoes themselves. The EF scale is based on newer understandings of what kind of damage can be caused by what kind of winds. But when developing the scale, some of the wind speed cutoffs ended up at very odd numbers, which were rounded off. In the case of the cutoff between EF4 and EF5 damage, that cutoff ended up being a significant one. EF4 ending at 199 had to be adjusted to EF4 ending at 200, which the single family home being swept away from starting as an example of EF5 damage to starting as an example of EF4 damage. At the time, one mile per hour may not have seemed like much of a change, but the single family home that Liza mentions is typically the only kind of structure impacted by tornadoes that strong that doesn't get destroyed by much lower winds. In other words, it's usually the only thing left for storm surveys to use when splitting hairs between EF4 and EF5 ratings. His research indicates that the rounding may have unintentionally led to lower numbers of EF5 tornadoes, rather than this EF5 drought being an indication that the strongest tornadoes today aren't as strong as the tornadoes 10 years ago. This doesn't mean the EF scale is broken, but it might mean that it needs some tweaks. The meteorological and engineering communities are aware of, and there's been some discussion about potentially addressing, but uh, no definitive um, action has been taken yet. As for what this means for Wisconsin, just because there hasn't been an F5 or EF5 since 1996, that doesn't mean we're due for one. Violent tornadoes are not like the winners that are in a stack of pull tabs where you know that eventually one of them has to hit. Each tornado event is statistically independent from the one that came before it and the ones that happen after it. So while going so long without an EF5 rating might be odd, it's more a matter of human record keeping than an indication that nature's most powerful phenomenon is getting any less dangerous. Every tornado is capable of being deadly, regardless of what we rate it. Meteorologist Phil DeCastro, Fox 11 News.